So is there anybody that you can think of that we need to talk to tonight? Is there a name that comes to mind? I mean, I can't tell you anybody that I'm overly suspicious of off the top of my head. I mean, this is such a stupid thing. I'm even embarrassed to say it. But it just didn't make any sense. I just hired a guy out here. What's his name? C.B. Rowe. I'm embarrassed to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Welcome back to Cross Country in Walterboro, South Carolina. A new development in the double murder trial of Alex Murda. Video unveiled in court shows Murda implicating his groundskeeper just hours after the killings occurred. The disbarred attorney is being charged with murder of his wife and son, and if convicted, could face life in prison. Here to react, trial attorney Brian Claypool and Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Um, Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining the program. Greg, I mean, this is just nonsense right here. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it, cops, but I, yeah. it's stupid, but I got to say this. Do you think it's going to work? No, I doubt it. Uh, the grounds keeper, keeper has been cleared. Uh, this sort of appears, at least to prosecutors, is the defendant trying to pin it on somebody else. They've built a fairly strong circumstantial evidence case against the defendant. Mm -hmm. It's not airtight by any means, but I think among the most powerful pieces of evidence is cell phone videotape from one of the victims, Paul Murdoch. Mm -hmm. uh, at 8.44, his cell phone video, you can hear in the background uh, his father's voice. Mm. Uh, that's at 8.44. Five minutes later, the cell phone is shut down, no activity. Immediately thereafter, mother and son are murdered. And yet Alex Murdaugh told police he wasn't at the kennels until much later when he discovered the bodies. Mm -hmm. They also collected uh, blood from inside the defendant's Chevrolet Suburban. Now, we don't know whose blood it is. We will. If it's the blood of the victims that was transferred from Alec Murdaugh to his vehicle as he drove back to the mansion to get cleaned up, that's pretty damning evidence. There's no shoe prints, no knee prints, and yet he told police that he kneeled down and tried to turn over the body. There were pools of blood there. There would be evidence of shoe prints and knee prints. And the other thing is he was completely clean, according to police, head to toe. Uh, as if he had cleaned himself up. His hands were completely clean, and yet he said he touched the bodies. So a lot of his story doesn't make sense. Brian Claypool, I, I was listening to these trial attorneys, that his defense attorneys, they, they are really skilled. And it seems like they're trying to poke holes into the way the crime scene was preserved. Right. Yeah, Lawrence, great to be back with you. It's, it's much like when you and I talked a week or two ago when you were in Idaho. Right. Remember when I talked to you about what the defense was going to be in that case? The lawyers in that case are going to argue that there's contamination, remember, at the crime scene. They didn't properly process evidence. So, so you can already see a preview of lawyers for Murdoch. They, they were cross-examining a lady the other day. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't take, uh, you didn't look for footprints. You didn't, uh, <laughs> try to examine any any footprints on the scene. She's like, well, that wasn't really my job. Look, in this case, Lawrence, that's only going to go so far. Right. They're trying to create doubt in the juror's mind. But I got to tell you, if your son was just murdered and your wife's just murdered, the first thing you say when investigators arrive isn't, oh, hey, wait a minute. I think that somebody might have been stalking my son. I think somebody regarding this boating accident might have had a beef to grind with my son. Are you kidding me, dude? You would be collapsing. You would be crying hysterically. You would not be trying yeah, lawyer to manufacture on. a motive for somebody else to have killed your son. And him crying in court, disingenuous. Why? Because when investigators arrived, they didn't see any tears in his eyes. Yeah. He's been crying all trial. Um, what was that when the cops arrived on the scene. He couldn't, uh, I guess he didn't have the teardrops with him. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining the program. So coming up, Cross Country takes a deep dive into AP African American Studies class. Ron DeSantis blocked in Florida. We'll give you the details next.